Okay, so let's look at rationalizing the denominator. And in this video, we're going to have variables underneath the radical. Uh, and we'll do square roots, cube roots, fourth roots. Now, uh, if you're looking for a video where there's no variables under the radical, I have, I have a separate video for that. Uh, and I'll put a link in the description. So you can go to that if you haven't gotten to radicals with variables yet. All right, so let's go ahead and simplify this thing. Uh, I've got four examples. So we got square root of x over y. So we know that we can't have a fraction under the radical. So first thing, let's go ahead and just split the radical up into square root of x over square root of y. Okay, so there's nothing else that I can do with them, but I do need to get rid of the radical in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of something over the square root of something. So I need to get rid of the radical. Well, you know when you're taking square roots of variables. So if we take the square root of y squared, that would be y. Okay, and and we are going to, in all of these examples. We're gonna we're gonna assume that all the variables are positive. So let me say that. All right. If we take the square root of y to the fourth, that would give us y squared. Okay. If we take the cube root of y cubed, that would give me y. If we take the cube root, if we take the cube root of y to the sixth, that would give me y squared. So basically what we're doing is we're taking the index of the radical and dividing it into the exponent. You see that? And remember when there's not a index there it's understood to be a 2. So if so you can see here the square root of y squared is y. That would get rid of the radical. So if I multiply y times y Okay, well y times y is y squared, and I know the square root of y squared is y. So this is going to give me the square root of xy over, and then this is the square root of y squared, which is the square root of xy over y. Okay, all right, so let's take a look at another one. All right, so here we have... Uh, the square root of x cubed over y to the fifth. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to split this up. So that square root of x cubed over the square root of y to the fifth. Okay, now if you're to the point where you are rationalizing denominators, then you've you've already had this part where you simplify like the square root of x cubed and the square root of y to the fifth. Okay, you've had that already. So I'm assuming you know it, but I'll kind of explain as I'm going what I'm doing. All right, so we see that x cubed, it's not a perfect square, but it does have a factor that's a perfect square. We know x squared is a perfect square. So x cubed, we can write as x squared times x over and then let's look at y to the fifth. Does y to the fifth have a factor that's a perfect square? Well, 2 doesn't go into 5 evenly. Okay, So let's come down a number to 4. Does 2 go into 4 evenly? Yes, it goes into there twice. So y to the fourth is a perfect square. So this y to the fifth, I'm going to rewrite it as y to the fourth times y. Okay, and so now I'm going to get, well, the square root of x squared is x, because 2 goes into 2 one time, and then this x to the first, well, it has to stay under the radical. And then here, 2 goes into 4 two times, so that's y squared, and this y to the first, it has to stay underneath the radical. All right, so I have the radical simplified. I just need to get the radical out of the denominator. So what can I multiply to y to get a perfect square? Well, 
y times y is y squared. So 2 will go into 2 evenly. So rationalizing the denominator, I'm going to multiply numerator and denominator by the square root of y over the square root of y. And so this is going to give me x square root of xy over and then I have my y squared okay and then look at this the square root of y times the square root of y is the square root of y squared and then the square root of y squared is y okay and then I have x square root of xy over and then y squared times y is y cubed okay and that's my answer there. All right, so let's take a look at another one. All right, so here we have cube root. All right, so first thing, I'm going to split the radical up. So that's going to give me the cube root of 8x over the cube root of y. Okay, so I look at this. Well, x to the first is not a perfect cube, but look at this. 8 is a perfect cube. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify this numerator. So the cube root of 8 is 2, and then the x will stay underneath. So that's 2 cube root of x over the cube root of y. All right, so now we're ready to rationalize the denominator. So the mistake that most students make is they would do this, which is wrong. All right. So what's wrong with that? Well, look at this. If I multiply this out, I get the cube root of y squared. Well, 3 doesn't go into 2 evenly. This is not a perfect cube. See, I'm dealing with cube roots now. Okay. So I need an exponent that 3 will divide into evenly. So the cube root of y and I need an exponent that 3 will divide into evenly. Well there's a bunch of them. 3, 6, 9, 12. Okay. But you know I've got y to the first. What if I do 3 here? 3 goes into 3 one time. Well what can I multiply to y to the first to get to get y cubed? Well what if I multiply it by y squared? y to the first times y squared is y cubed. And see, that's a perfect cube root. Okay, But like I said, that's the mistake most students make, is they just multiply by whatever that denominator is. Okay, And you can't, you can't do that. All right, so we have to multiply by y squared. So this is going to give me... Two cube root of x y squared over, and then this is going to give me the cube root of y cubed. So that's two cube root x y squared over, and then look at this. Three goes into three one time, so that's y cube root of y cubed is y. All right, so let's take a look at the last one. And here we have another cube root. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and split the radical up. So that's cube root of 3 over the cube root of 4x squared. Okay. All right. So I can't simplify the radicals because 3 is not a perfect cube. It doesn't have a factor that's a perfect cube. 4 is not a perfect cube. It doesn't have a factor that's a perfect cube. And x squared is not a perfect cube. Okay, so now we're ready to rationalize the denominator. All right, so I need to multiply numerator and denominator by the cube root of something. Okay, well, I need to multiply something to this so that I will end up with a perfect cube root. All right, well, 4 is not a perfect cube. Well, do we know some numbers that are perfect cubes? Yeah, 8's a perfect cube. That's 2 cubed. 27 is a perfect cube. 
Uh, 64 is a perfect cube, 125 is a perfect cube, and so on. Okay, well, I've got a 4. Well, I know that 4 times 2 is 8, and that and 8 is a perfect cube. So if I multiply 2 times the 4, that will give me 8 under the cube root. And then I know the cube root of 8 is 2. Okay, all right, now let's look at the x squared. Well, I need an exponent that 3 will divide into evenly. Well, 3 divides into 3 evenly, right? So x squared times what is x cubed? Well, x squared times x. And so I need to multiply numerator and denominator by 2x. And so this will give me the cube root and 3 times 2x is 6x over, and then that's going to be the cube root, 4 times 2 is 8, x squared times x is x cubed, and so this is going to be the cube root of 6x over, and then look at this, the cube root of 8 is 2, 3 goes into 3 one time, so I'm, that's x to the first, and this would be my answer. Now don't get don't get tempted and cancel these x's out and this six and this two out. You can't do that. Okay, this is not three. All right, because you see the six x, it's under a radical. The two x is not. So you cannot cancel those. Okay, so don't don't do that. All right, so I hope this video helped. Check out my other videos. Uh, give me a like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching.